All right, this is Algebra 2, Lesson 67 on page 283, Radical Denominators. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for all of your algebra classes, you will always rationalize the denominators. We have done this when there's been a single denominator that is radical, like, all right, we've done that before. <clears throat> We multiply by square root of 2 or square root of 2. Now we're going to have a binomial in the denominator, which means there's going to be two terms. All right, we do this in algebra. However, when you get to calculus, instead of rationalizing the denominator, you rationalize the numerator. All right? So for algebra, we, we always rationalize the denominator. For calculus, we typically rationalize the numerator. Otherwise, the denominator equals zero and you can't divide by zero, all right? So these look different from what we have worked before because it's not over one square root of a value. And the way that you rationalize a binomial that has a radical in it is you multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So looking at that denominator, what is the conjugate of that denominator? Jake, what's the conjugate of that denominator? Four minus, no, negative four minus square root. Correct, negative four minus square root of three. And because the original problem has no equal sign, remember all we can do is multiply by what's effectively one, which is anything over itself. So remember, for a conjugate, the only sign that changes is that middle sign, not that front sign. When we multiply conjugates, how is it different than multiplying any two other binomials that are not, Therese? The middle term disappears. So you don't have to do first, inner, outer, last. You just do first, last. Because when you multiply the inner and the outer, they cancel each other out. So when you have conjugate binomials, you just multiply the first terms and you multiply the second terms. Got it? So one times anything in the numerator is what is already there, right? Now we'll multiply the first. Negative four times negative four is? And positive square root of three times negative square root of three Negative three. Negative three. All right, notice that denominator rationalizes. Because when we multiply by conjugates, that any square root times itself becomes what's under the radical. So 16 minus three is 13. All right, final answer. Didn't you put an R? Didn't you say Oh, yeah, it's not yet. I love it when the class answers. I love it. All right, look at <clears throat> example two. They just get a little more complex. All right, how am I going to rationalize this denominator? Evie, what should I multiply by? Correct. All right, I distribute <clears throat> the three to both terms in the numerator. What is that first term, Mackenzie? What's three times two squared of three? Could be six squared of three. Yes. Minus what, Mackenzie? Three squared of two. Three squared of two. All right, Dylan, help me. What's two squared of three times two squared of three? Uh, so two. So, two squared of three times two squared of three. Six? No. No? Wait. <laughs> Ashley, we're going to have you help him. Mm -hmm. Is it six squared of three? Two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
What is it, Michael? <laughs> How did you get 12, Michael? I know, Hannah, you knew. I knew you knew. It's 2 times 2 times, what's square root of 3 times square root of 3? Three? 3. So it's 2 times 2 times 3. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Got it? I wasn't that far off. <laughs> yeah, but it's in math. We're, it's not like horseshoes. Close doesn't count, right? Okay. And what is this? Hannah, what's that second term going to be? Minus two. Minus two, which equals six square root of three minus three square root of two over ten. Okay, guys, I want y'all to pay attention because this is going to be so important for you to see. Ten is the common denominator for both. Normally, okay, but I'm gonna, so I can really, I, this is gonna be so important for you to understand next year. 10 can be written under both of these. So I really could write six square root of three over 10 minus three square root of two over 10, right? Because when I have a common denominator, what do I do? The sign moves to the numerator, I write it over. Normally we go from here to here, correct? I need you also to be able to go from here to here. That denominator, every term in the numerator can be written over that one common denominator. Okay, but now I can simplify, can't I? This first term can be simplified. All right, so that becomes three, that becomes five. So it's three squared of three over five minus three squared of two over 10. This should be your final answer. Not this. What does your textbook give? What do I want to see? Because I want to I want to see you be able to go the other direction with a common denominator. Okay. All right. There is, I believe, one more. That is the only examples. There we go.